uh, a letter. Uh, yes, they were letters in those days. <laughs> Could I go out to Darlington because something had happened? And um, they were building the first bypass round um, Darlington, and the train had disappeared. It was a kettle hole. And I could go down the bottom where the train was and get out all those five mosses, still perfectly preserved, that we've seen. So in that one um, kettle hole, which we re you could find, you could go all the way back, not quite back to um, the, the last ice age, but there it is. And I've spent so much of my life digging holes in um, peatland and then looking at the pollen things. So all my students did. I found that a bit boring, but there you are. <laughs> you can't have it all, can you? <laughs> so at last, across the world, both sides of the climatic change, um, you know, and they have changed in the last two years, are talking more about the importance of the rehabilitation of biodiverse ecosystems. And this is coming through. They're not talking, they've dropped the thing about global warming, they've dropped the thing about climate change, they're talking about environmental change. Well, that's been going on ever since there was a living thing you know, to record the changes. So let's take a look at some of the good news changes which have been. I'm rather proud of this book, um, but the Greens hated it. And why did they hate it? Because I talked in there about animals being used for scientific things. And it was banned, just like that. Damn good book. And I, at that, <laughs> that um, time, I was working with um, Lord Poet, who was one of our great people who pushed, you know, that we should use animals for um, you know, for scientific research. But the, his son, the other funny little poet, hated me and wouldn't even read that book. So it's been going on for quite a long time. So, when I was young, we had uh, lots and lots of small farmers. But you remember we had the agricultural revolution, the recent one, and we end up with 400 uh, uh, um, oh, I'll get the numbers wrong. Um, Four million um, hectares of land, and we've taken down all those wonderful um, trees and uh, the hedges. And it looked like that. And the biodiversity had gone. Uh, most of them were under um, uh, cereals, and of course, cereals do not produce. Um, uh, flowers which have um, uh, anything to offer, to offer to our honeybees and things like that. So it was a real problem and that was, well, um, eight years ago we actually started um, to show on uh, one farm and then 29 farms that is not rocket science to get all these things back. Um, so what did the government do? Well they said, oh, well, we, um, that's what's left of one of the hedgerows. And if we um, put down herbicides, then that will kill all the annual um, uh, weeds. And of course it didn't. It just made a highway from the, oh, they all live in this bit. And so the poor old farmer has to spray them three times a year just to keep the annuals from getting in there. So we went along and saw a farmer, and he must have th thought we were a bit mad. We said, can we have your farm, and we'll put the biodiversity back. And it was in Morton, um, uh, not from where I live. And we just planted up the first six metres, because that's where the real problem was, using more and more and more um, chemicals on the first. And uh, we'll say, we'll put these things, and we got it wrong because we got the wrong weeds in there. So we use selective herbicide. Bellamy's dead. If you say selective herbicide, you know, you can't do those things. Um, but we did. And we got rid of the thing. And we got the right plants in. And they're still there. 
So the farmer, and he was very, very pleased because he now doesn't have to put all those um, the chemical on, and that makes him more, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't like the word, but um, much better. And in come all the insects. And here are just some examples. We've done 25 farms now. And if you saw what the Royal Society has just said about the future of British farming, that we are not going to have any small farmers. The whole of Britain is going to be covered by big moo cow sheds with 8,500 moo cows walking about in there. But you can do it. And not far from here, um, I will be reopening Butterfly World in about a fortnight in St Albans, and you can go and see how you can get butterflies back into the area. When I was a small boy, um, I could pick a bunch of flowers for my mum in London, in the east end of London. And uh, where have they gone? Where have our sparrows gone? The sparrows have gone simply because we use so much um, uh, pesticide, even, well, especially in London, our gardens and things, that the poor old mummy sparrow um, can no longer find inchworms to feed, feed the uh, thing for about five days. And that's why they've gone. The other problem is we all have uh, houses without holes in. Hitler was wonderful. He made holes in all our houses and thousands and thousands of sparrows. You see, it all, well, I, he, I wish he hadn't done it, but um, <laughs> because uh, he actually knocked, um, or partly knocked our house down by a dude bug. And the second dude bug that got there um, actually um, didn't go off. And we got there, it was in our garden next door, and um, uh, there were notices, there were notes inside it from the Polish saying, this one won't go off. So we got all the explosion out, explosion out. And the first time I made it in the press, David Bellamy creeps upstairs and blows the front of his house, of his uh, best pa uh, pal's house. And I did. And um, when I got back after several operations on my head, perhaps I'm still here, um, I was t taken up in front of the whole school. I didn't get the cane, but I was castigated by the headmaster. And as I went down, the um, uh, chemistry master, well done, Bellamy, you'll make a scientist yet. <laughs> and I did! <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Bees. We are losing bees enormously. Um, and as... Um, you know, we know if we lose the bees, then how do we pollinate a third of the, um, the farmer's crops in Britain? And it is not rocket science. All you have to do is put in um, clover, red and white clover, and the bees come straight back. Now, I work with the, um, the um, caravan industry, and we're now told we mustn't do that because somebody might get stung. <laughs> So how do you solve these problems? Not quite sure, but that's a, a, a bee bar. And how about this? A farmer phoned me up and he said that you've done something terrible for my um, uh, barley crop. Um, all these bloody orchids are coming up. And I've looked it up in the book and they're one of the rarest orchids we've got. And it is, it's um, the pyramidal orchid. What shall I do? I said, well, pick some and give them to the school so they can see what I like, take them to the churches, put it in the church. But he said, I said, well, do it without anyone tell you, told me, you get them without. And we get these every year. No rocket science at all. This is natural history. Wow. And there's the team, uh, Marek Nowakowski. This is my bee. And this was the farmer who uh, lent us his farm but he found he couldn't make quite as much money, so he's a baddie again. Dr. Farmer Brown, I hate you, but he did leave us. I have been going to Australia for years and years and years, and you will probably remember on my 50th birthday, I was in prison there. Um, and it was not much fun being in prison. I was in solitary confinement for some time, and 965 other people,